I was sitting here and I was thinking, I was thinking way back before I started a business and how my life used to be. I was working seven days a week. I was a hard worker. My working environment wasn't really bad, but I was putting in the hours and I started to think, when did I begin to get respect as a black man? Let me tell you a little story. I was having lunch at this place that I usually go to. I had been going there for years. And uh, one of the waiters, you know, I knew he was, he was telling me how they had to let someone go because she was too chatty. And he said something really crazy. He says, you know, she was saying the wrong thing to people such as yourself, business owners. Never have I told this man that I had a business. Never did I even, we had conversations, we talked about, you know, weather, sports and stuff, but I never ever told this guy I had a business. And I said, how did I, I said, how'd you know I had a business? He says, who else comes in here in the middle of the day? You come in here in the middle of the day like business owners, because business owners have free control of their time to do what they want to do. And, it, you know, it, it kind of hit me and I was like, okay, you know, and I, I went ahead and paid my check and I left, but the world is watching. When you have a business, the world is watching you in so many ways that until that moment, I could not conceive because I don't go around like, hey, I'm a business owner, but I, I don't do that. I just go do my thing, eat, whatever. Yet he said this, and I remember another place that it was where I was at the bar and this girl she knew I was a business owner as well. So this is why black men need to start businesses. I'm going to give you some reasons. I'm going to give you some perceptions of why you should start a business. The first thing, no one is going to pay you like you will pay yourself. I only had one job that where I was pretty happy with the pay and it was six figures. It was the only job I happened where I just did not, I, I had no issues with the pay because the pay was really, really good. But no one's gonna pay you the way that you will pay yourself. Number two, respectability. When you start a business, you get respect. Now, I know I'm gonna have people who are gonna talk about Black Wall Street and all this other stuff. That happened, it's real, but it's, 2020 it's a different day because one of the things I have learned from being a business owner is if you have a product or service people will buy from you white people black people Asian people it doesn't matter I've literally my first digital product making money A to Z with self storage audience uh, self storage unit auctions 95% of my customer base was white. How did I advertise my book here on YouTube? They knew I was black. They didn't care. They didn't care. That's like, well, this guy's got something I want to get into. Let me go ahead and check it out. So let this notion go like, you know, they ain't going to buy from me because I'm black. No, 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 no. They ain't buying from you because you've got bad products, bad service or something like that. That's why they won't buy from you. It's not because they're, you're black. And I'm even going to go into another lesson that I learned as a business owner. I used to, my last job, I used to work with this racist white woman who, after I left and she learned that I had started my own company, this racist white woman sent me her resume. That was a mind blowing, you know, cause I, I'm, to this day, I'm still shocked that she did that. I got on the phone, I called my boy Mario. I was like, man, you won't believe what just happened today. And we were all sitting there like spellbound. So what I have found out that is once you become a business owner, even racist will want to do business with you. Even racist will want to work for you because green is the most important color. And I'll go back to another business owner moment. I was on the storage auction trail. I was dealing with Bobby and, you know, because I became a competitor, I wasn't just out there hoping to get units. I was like, 
I gave people a run for their money. I bid against anybody. You know, that was one of my rep. That was my rep. It's like I bid against anybody. I go toe to toe. I spend crazy money. And I got this fool off of me because I was being competitive and he was racist. Deliverance, you know, the movie Deliverance with Burt Reynolds and the kid playing the banjo. He was one of those kind of people. Racist as the day is long. But this dude came over to me and said, hey, you don't bid against me. I won't bid against you. And until I left the storage auction business, he kept his word. So when you become a business owner, you become a force to be reckoned with. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the process. In the beginning, it ain't going to be easy. In the beginning, you're going to have to work. You will not have more free time. You will not have time to hang out. And also, that seems like a negative, but it's not a negative. And this is another reason that black men need to start a business because you're going to be gainfully occupied running your business. You're not going to have time to get into trouble. Because I know this before I became a business owner, I was a speeder. I was always speeding. I was like always so close to losing my license because I had so many points paying high insurance premiums. And once I became a business owner, that behavior stopped. It just stopped. So once you become a business owner, you will stop doing things that will put you in harm's way. Because I was wondering, because, you know, I've, I've been here, I've, I've, I've shared with you guys many things that have happened. And I have a different kind of mindset on the police brutality thing, because my interactions with the police have been positive. And I, I got to go like, why have my interactions been with the positive? Because most of my interactions have been with them as a business owner, not a regular citizen. I remember one time, like, you know, you have these little over, off, over, what is it called? Um, overpass, you know, the, the thing on the side of the road. Well, I was on this because it was going to dump down into an exit and the cop pulled me over and I, I, I knew it was wrong. I didn't even like, you know, I didn't even like lie to him. He's like, where are you going? It's like, I'm trying to make an appointment. I got to use the bathroom. And, you know, he just gave me a warning. But the vehicle that I was driving was registered in my company name. You cannot tell me that that has not had an influence. And like, you know, once again, I like to throw out this challenge. Name all of the rich black men that have been killed by the police. That every, you know, you mentioned the name, any, you know, Eddie Murphy, um, you know, Mike Tyson, oh, name one. You, you can't name one. This is one of the things that poor black people will tell you over and over. I don't care how much money you get. You still going to be called and treated like an N. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to represent. That ain't true. Jay-Z's got this um, song, the story of OJ, which I hate because it is personifying that behavior. But Jay-Z and Beyonce have are so far insulated <clears throat> from the things that happens to the average black person. It is just crazy because, you know, he made that song to be down and to keep with his street cred. But you you're just not once you get a business, once you get some respectability. You won't be treated like that. You won't be treated like that. And another reason that you want to start a business is to chart your economic destiny because with a job you're only going to make so much even if you start a service business and this business doesn't even make a million a year maybe you start a service business that does three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year guess what a <clears throat> hundred thousand of that's going in your pocket man you're going to make more money and you're also going to learn the art of making money. You're going to learn how to do things to make money. You're going to learn how to look at deals. You're going to learn how to negotiate. You're going to learn so much. And this is why it should be a mandate for all black men to start businesses. You should be in that position because you're not going to lie. You're not going to fire yourself and 
you're not going to lay yourself off. And once you get to a certain level, it's going to get comfortable. You know, I'm almost like, you know, you, you get comfortable at the $350,000, $500,000. You get real comfortable. Honestly, it gets kind of hard to go for more because you're making $500,000 a year. You can live wherever you want, rent, drive, do, do whatever you want. And then don't just stop at 500,000, go for a million, then go for 2 million, then go for 3 million. But I'm just here to tell you that being a business owner as a black man opens up so many doors. I have a lot of friends who are business owners and some of the stories they tell me, like one of my friends, he owns a car wash and he's like, he's like, he said his wife, she locked in, she grandfathered in. But if he ever, if anything ever happened to her, I'm getting me a younger one. I'm getting me a younger one. He's already got a plan. <laughs> he already got a plan. But another thing that reason you want to start a business is your dating options are going to exponentially increase. It's 2020. You see it all over the internet. You see it on YouTube. You see it. You can date whoever you want. You can have whoever you want because the business owner, because, you know, there, there, there's a few brothers who are making these stimulus check videos. And one of them, I'm just like, this guy is so charismatic. And, you know, he, he was just like, he had such a presentation because that's one of the reasons his YouTube channel is doing really well. So I looked him up. He's married to a white woman. And I'm like. I don't know how many times that I have seen a brother who has a unique presentation, a, a, a different way of carrying themselves. And I, you see that over and over again. And I know why, because see, when you are a black man that starts a non-traditional non-conformist, you ain't trying to start a barbershop and there's nothing wrong with starting a barbershop, but you're not trying to start a Jamaican restaurant. When you start a business that goes outside of the cultural norm, you become different. You're, you, you think different, you view the world differently. And through this lens, you have more options. I want you to think, like the first two to five years of your business, they're going to be rough. Let me just go ahead and tell you that. But that rough compared to working a job, being mistreated, because I've done videos, the job environment is hostile. You could be doing a good job, show up on time, do everything you need to do and still end up being laid off. It's hostile. So you want to deal with that hardship of starting a business. Or do you want to deal with the hardship of everyday life and being a person who literally has the carpet pulled from under them every time they, because, you know, I have a friend who, who's had jobs and every time he was doing well, someone would pull a carpet from under, something would happen every, every time. And once you start a business, you don't, you don't live like that. That is not your life. That is not your situation. And also, even if you start a small business that never makes a million dollars a year, you're going to make three times to five times the average person's income, even with just a small business. And here's another thing for my black men who have been to jail. When you start a business and you are the CEO of the president, do you understand that folks don't investigate you as much as they investigate employees? This is something I knew. This is one of the reasons I was able to escape the boarding house life because I intuitively knew that they would investigate me, but they wouldn't investigate my reference. So you can get out of jail, go to your secretary of state, get you an LLC, create you a company, create you a business, provide good service, get a few reviews, and no one's gonna really look at your criminal background anymore. They're not gonna, they, they ain't gonna care. They're not gonna look at it anymore. But as long as you stay in the employee sphere, every time you turn around, you're gonna have an issue. Also, 
to my black men who've been to jail. You start a business and you create yourself an LLC. Do you know that you can rent your apartment in the name of your LLC once you develop business credit? No more denials. Because a lot of felons have problems renting places because once they do that background check, oh, you know, we ain't renting you. A business has so many ways for you to conquer and defeat the system. You could be a criminal and have yourself a business. You could be a criminal and have yourself a trucking firm putting seven figures a year in your pocket. No one cares. And this, this is one of the things, like for my felons, when you are a business owner and you put up an ad to hire people, no one really checks you out and it's like, oh, so-and-so was in prison. They come to the office in their suit and tie and their best behavior because they want the job, man. They want the job. Once you get on this side of the fence, and this is one of the disconnects that I have with people on this channel, is everything that, that comes from me comes from a business owner perspective. It doesn't come from an employee perspective, which is why I was tone deaf on the stimulus check benefits because, you know, frankly, not to be elitist, but it will come off elitist, $200 ain't nothing to me. 2600 bucks ain't nothing to me. 35, they ain't nothing to me. That's little bitty money. But for the average person who needs money, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Hence the reason the stimulus check videos. And like I said, I said that once stimulus checks became real, the possibilities of having the package, I would start doing these stimulus check videos, but I wasn't going to do them long as we stayed in proposal and update land. And another thing, once you get through the, 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 the first few years of your business, which will be the hardest, you'll have more time. I got a friend, he has a $8 million a year business. You know, he has an office, which he never is in. You know where he is? He is at home with his young wife and two kids. That's where he spends most of his time. He goes in the office, you know, they have ADP. He don't even have to sign checks. He don't have to do nothing. He just have to look over some things from time to time. And every month, tsh, big money comes into his checking account from this business. And he at home with his, cause he's, uh, I think Carl is 55 and his wife is 34 and they have two children. He home most of the time. He up with to doing the family life. I mean, I want you to think. I have another friend who's a business owner. He spends so much time at home, the neighbors thought that he was retired. And he has an active, full-fledged business, properly staffed. He just comes and goes as he pleases. See, after those first two to five years, and you go ahead and put your systems and processes in place, that can be your life. I have a friend who was going to sell her business and I convinced her not to do it. And I convinced her to hire the appropriate staff. The business makes more money. She ain't never there. She ain't never there. It runs without her. This is why we as black people need to be, we need to be number one in business, starting businesses. We need to be number one in entrepreneurship because let's go back to Japanese and Chinese people, which this country put into concentration camps during World War II. These folks were sent to these camps. They were not the, they were not the flavor. Then what did they learn? We're going to start businesses, man. And they started businesses and they started becoming the pharmacists and the doctors and everything. Then all of a sudden you see an Asian kid in a Lambo. You think nothing about it. You think, oh, it's daddy rich. You ain't think nothing of it. But you driving a, a, a Hellcat and you get racially profiled. Start a business. Start learning the game of business. So what I'm getting ready to do is to start toning up a lot of people. So if you want to start a business, I got some options for you. First of all, let's talk about the folks with no money. 30 days to 2,500, the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. 
right there. Go ahead and get it. God bless you. Take these courses, go to work. And there's a free Facebook group. Get to work. Also, for those of you who are better positioned, I have a suite of consulting packages because we're about to go hard on that because right now I've got probably, I just started this last week, got like 15, 16 consulting calls. And most of them are from young black men with businesses. I love that. I love that. Because see, when you start that business, you only not only change your life, you change the, 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 the trajectory of your defendants, of your, your descendants. You change the lives of your children. And then therefore you change the lives of their children, which are not even born yet. So this is why in many, many reasons that I have not even chimed in that you as a black man should start a business. You should not be looking for a job. If you get a good job, you get yourself a high paying job. You should then opt, use that high income to put into your own enterprise and start your own business. Because I'm here to tell you as a living, breathing witness, the game is different as a business owner versus being a regular citizen. So this is why you as a black man need to start a business and just miss me with all of this petty stuff. I don't want to do it. I just want to party. We've got bigger issues than wanting to party. And, saw, and having a business, having a proper LLC structure will set you apart and it will create a legacy and it will create a lifestyle that is bar none. You'll be able to do things. You'll be able to force things. You'll be able to live a certain way because of a business. You take care of business, the business will take care of you. So. Go below, see what you need, see how I can help you out, and watch this next video.